Whoa, why my win rate get so low? Okay, jokes aside, today we're talking about OP.GG and account reviews. So one of the most common forms of coaching is these kind of OP reviews because it's a very quick and dirty way to get a picture of where somebody is at in their League of Legends climb. However, they're a lot simpler than like actual gameplay coaching and they're pretty linear. So I'm going to share with you guys my kind of philosophies of how I go about coaching somebody's OP.GG so that hopefully you can understand how to view OP.GG's and accounts in a good and healthy way. If you guys like this stuff, I may do another video down the line where I review your OP.GG's, so drop them in the comments below and I'll let you know if I put yours in the next video. Let's get into it. Okay, so for today's video, I'm just gonna use my account for the initial example and then we're gonna sh go through some example accounts of clients in my academy later. So the very first thing I look at when I open up an OP.GG is I'm gonna go straight away and look at the games played. Now, generally speaking, uh, you wanna be playing, you know, two to three to four, you know, maybe two to four games a day. Uh, at the end of the week, I like to see, you know, 20 to 30 games a week. Um, and then I want to make sure that that lines up with about the point we're at in the season. So take a look at my account and, you know, I'm coming up on 600 games here. And this is actually, it might be even a little over. It's about, I think this is about what I'm looking at. You know, in, in previous seasons, back when I was in high school and I had more time, I played a lot more games by this point. Um, but I think this is near the upper end of what I expect to see. You got to make sure you have the right amount of games played so that you're like actually practicing things. You actually have the time to see improvement and that kind of thing. So that's the first thing I'll check. The second thing I'll check in terms of games played is how often they're played. Now, the analogy I like to give for this is if you had to think about going to the gym and you had the choice between going for one hour a day or you had the choice to go seven hours on Sunday. And you had to think like, you know, which one's going to be better for muscle growth? Which one do you guys think will give you the best muscle growth returns? It's going to be the one hour a day and you can mix things up and you can think about it that way. League is very similar. If you play 20 games over the weekend and then zero throughout the week, that's going to make your league returns a lot lower. So generally you want to be consistent. And if I would take a look at my account and say, okay, you know, we played two yesterday, one today two the day before that, one this day, she did awful. And then we didn't play for three days. And we played three that day. And it's kind of like not that consistent. And then we have a 10 day break in here. So if I was coaching myself, I'd say, hey man, what's going on with your breaks? Now, sometimes you have to take breaks because of life. But if you want to get good returns from league, you can't have a lot of these, right? You got to make sure that you're getting more consistent. Right now, I'm at one of my least consistent parts of the season. This month has been like the month where I've played like the least league. I um, mean, I've had these really, really big breaks. So that's the first thing I'm going to look at. And I'll say, hey, make sure you're getting your 20 to 30 games in a week and make sure you're playing consistently, you know, maybe three a day. And that, you know, three a day comes up to 21 at the end of the week. That would be perfect. That is about the perfect amount of games. If you're too under that, why? If you're too over that, probably slow down and study more. The second thing I look at is champions played. Now, this is another mistake that I've made this season. Um, my core champion pool last season was Annie and Trindamir, and I was a two trick. This season, I added in Victor and I added in Ari, and now I'm at that kind of four champion part. And that's, you know, that's okay. It's definitely not perfect. I think especially if you're below masters and below grandmasters, you definitely want to make sure you limit it to three, four is getting up there. However, I made the mistake of trying to add in more than that. And I spent a lot of games on my Vladimir and my Rise and my Tristana. And I have some other uniques here for kind of no reason. And all of these games are kind of wasted because these are games on champions that I'm not, they're not similar to the champions I play. And I'm not going to commit to playing these champions. So the 33 games I played on Vlad, plus the 17 I played on Rise, plus the 14 I played on, played on Tristana, they're all kind of wasted. So of my almost 600 games, I have 60, 70, 80 of all these unique champions that just aren't helping me improve. And that's a lot of game time, even though they happen in small increments over the season, like I had this Vlad game earlier. In zero world, should I have played this Vlad game? And you see my win rate over the past two weeks is 70%. And I'm just like kind of wasting my good win rate and wasting my good practice with this Vladimir game. If you want to play champions outside of your core champion pool, that's a good thing. Just don't do it on your core account, right? Get a second account where you practice new champions. Do it in flex queue. Do it in normals. Like just do it in anything else other than your main account solo queue. So my champion pool, 
generally is pretty solid. It, it's well-rounded. I have Trindamir, which is completely different from Victor, which is completely different to Ari. Ari and Annie are very similar. The reason I played Ari, it was before the Annie rework. And Ari is actually the champion that got me into Grandmaster the first time because she's very similar to Ari, but she's just better at the time. So I kind of, I usually only play one or the other. I don't generally play both at the same time uh, in terms of like the patch. So this patch, I'm playing Annie, right? You can see some Annie games in here. You don't see any Ari. Some patches I play Ari, not Annie. So my core champion pool at any given time is three champions. And that's the sweet spot. If you're at two, it's good. If you're at one, it's fine. You'll just have to dodge more. But anything over that, you're going to start wasting a lot of your game time. The next thing I look at is builds. So I'll kind of glance at the runes and the builds and the champions picked. I'll think, okay, does this line up with meta? So I'll think, okay, this guy, he's playing first strike on Victor a lot. How normal is that? And I'm going to go look something up and I'm going to say, all right, let's go see. Let's go. Uh, my favorite site is pro builds. Personally, I have two sites. I'm going to show you guys pro builds. One of my favorite because this is what pros are doing in their solo queue. You get to see kind of how they're doing it, what they're doing. And I like pro builds because the pros tend to do fundamental things. They're not very experimental because if they're wrong and you know, it costs them something, it's very, very bad. So pros tend to be very stable with what they build. So we can see the pros are taking first strike about a third of the time. They're taking airy a little bit over a third of the time. So yeah, first strike, first strike makes sense. I would say, okay, do we go airy ever? You probably want to do some airy games when it's optimal. And yes, this, this guy does airy sometimes. So perfect. The, the runes look good. And then you can even go more in depth on the runes if you'd like, but these look pretty good, especially when you're talking about a master grandmaster player. I mean, he's probably going to know what he takes and why and why he likes it. The other site I'll show you guys is Lolalytics. Um, I like to go Lolalytics and we'll just look up Victor here. Um, oh, hello. And then you can see some win rates for here. So you can look up your rank. Again, I like to look up Master Plus to get a feel for kind of high yellow. And this will just kind of tell you how often people are taking the different things. You know, you can see there's a lot of Ludens going on. Lyandry's is the second most common. And there's a little bit of crown and very little of everything else. Um, and we'll see if my build matches up with that. Ludens, Lyandry's, Ludens, Lyandry's, Ludens. So yeah, it's like, okay, it, this player seems to be building uh, his runes and he's, he's taking his builds correctly. Um, I'll do the same thing for all the champions, right? First strike on any, a little bit funky. Let's go check pro builds and uh, so on and so forth. Um, especially if it's a champion, I don't know. I have to check pro builds. For mid lane, I know the meta for the vast majority of the champions, but it's always good to double check on kind of stat sites. So we'll look at builds. Now, the last thing I'll look at is if I can find any common factors between the losses. So this is the part that is very hit or miss. OP.GG reviews, they're very good at telling you roughly where somebody's at, but they're not good at telling you, you know, how they actually play the game. They tell you like when they play, when they queue up, how often they queue up for, you know, how good their relationship with solo queue is, but it doesn't tell you how they perform when they're actually in the game. So it's very hard to get good learning objectives from OP.GG reviews. It's mostly to make sure you're not doing anything crazy, like playing too much or playing too little or playing too many champions. However, I will try to look at the losses and think, hmm, is there maybe something that we can do? So this Victor game that we lost, we can look at it and say, okay, well, you know, I can use my coaching experience here. And this is the spot where my coaching experience is most valuable. And I can think, well, this is a really tough game for Victor, right? Because they have a very high threat jungle. They have a very uh, high threat mid laner. It's a pretty tough matchup for Victor. And we're not going to get a lot of help from our jungle. So this is going to be a scary game. This is a game that Victor can't carry. So if you're in the goal of 1v9ing, this is a game that's going to be very, very tricky for Victor. And it would probably have been better here if I played Annie. And if I played Annie, I can set up my carries. I can set up my Bane. I can set up my Graves a lot better rather than drafting three hard carries. So this could be a little bit of a drafting issue. Um, if we're looking at the stats, like the stats were very good this game. However, the Akali got away from us in lane. So I would ask the question, hey, Victor player, how was Akali able to get away from you in lane so much? Was she able to just run you over? Were you just conceding Pryo to, and that ends up hurting your team? What was going on with the Akali KP? And then we'll go look at the other losses and see if other trends keep up. The Vladimir game, we already talked about this. We just straight up shouldn't play Vladimir. If we're going to play Vladimir, we should probably dodge. Look at this Annie game. Um, now this Annie game, this looks like a good draft. This looks like a good draft. We have, um, we have the Assassin Jungle. We have the Annie to go with it. But we're four and six. It was like, we just misplayed this game. The OP.GG is not telling us a ton about how we misplayed it. So we would just have to go look at the game. WTF, what happened? 
Uh, and we keep looking through, we can see some things. How is this game for Victor? This is a much safer game for Victor. Playing into Annie is a very good matchup. Kindred can't really get on top of you that easily with Annie. So this is a very curious game. How is Annie able to get kill participation here? How did you die four times? This is a game that Victor should be able to solo carry. The fact that we're dying four times in this game is really suspicious. So I'd say Victor player, go check that out. Um, however, it's mostly just asking questions about what happened in certain games. That's what we're gonna look at. So now we're gonna look at a couple of examples. So first example here, we have Dope Goblin. This is one of our Azir players in the Academy. And we would take a look at his account. First thing again, games played. I like his games played. His games, games played are solid. Uh, this is right around where I'd expect you to be at this point in the season. I think this is very stable. Um, I think it's like right around where I'm at, actually. He might be a little bit lower. Yeah, so he has slightly less games than me. Um, and then we're going to look at how often he plays them. He played one yesterday. It's fine. He played four the day before that, which is also fine. And then he took a break for a few days. And then he played a couple. And then he played a couple. This is all good. This looks solid. I like the way, okay, this is maybe too many, especially, whoa, so here's one of the first red flags, ding, 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 count these games, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, he played eight, nine, in one day, so he played nine in one day, and he lost, one, two, three, four, five, so he went negative win rate, you know, we haven't seen that much red on Mr. Goblin's account here, however, where we start to see the red, it's where more games are getting played. So to Mr. Goblin, I would say, be careful of playing too much in one day. Play when you feel good. And if you don't feel good, cut it fast. And if you lose and you still feel good, cut it fast anyways. You would much rather have this end at this loss, go the next day and get back into this kind of pattern. Otherwise, pretty solid. We can see his games played for the past seven days is a little bit low, but I think it's because he just hit masters and so he's kind of taking a break and that's okay. As long as the breaks make sense. And then we'll look at champions played. So Mr. Goblin here is an Azir one trick. That's okay. When you're getting into this master ELO range, I mean, being a one trick has pros and cons, right? If you're going to be a one trick, you're going to have to dodge more often. Like it just, it is what it is. Um, some games you're going to be very low impact and you're just going to have to deal with that. It is what it is. Um, some patches, you are going to be at the mercy of the patches by like 200 LP. That's on top of the 200 LP. You're already kind of, going to naturally go up and down so one tricks have the tendency to kind of do this with their lp graph that's okay as long as you're okay with that that's fine um if mr goblin wanted to invest some time in learning a second champion or a third champion to become you know more patch proof or become more well-rounded that's also fine but he just has to be aware of what's going on next thing we'll check is the builds um mr goblin again masters player he talks a lot with other azir players in the one trick he knows what he's building he knows what he's taking um but again not bad to double check it. Double check on the analytics, double check on pro builds, what people are doing. And then the last thing we'll check is if we can get a feel for what's going on in these losses. You know, are they super high threat games? You know, here we have a high threat support, high threat mid, you know, high threat top and a pretty aggressive jungle. And this is a game that's really, really hard to play as Azir. It's a game that's really, really hard to play as Zeri Zillion. And I would, I would ask like, why did you play this out? Like, this is probably a game, you know, if I picked Victor here, I am dodging. <laughs> no questions asked. There's no, there's no chance I'm playing this game out. Um, this is just going to be very, very hard. Knowing that it was very, very hard, did you do the right things? Were you very passive? Were you very respectful of what could happen? Because, you know, we do have a negative KD here, which is interesting. However, the rest of our teammates died quite a bit. So maybe we were being respectful and it's just a game that was just tough. Um, however, you definitely can optimize these deaths and optimize the CS a little bit. Uh, given the situation. You know, this game looks like a remake or something. This one is very interesting. Where we get to 26 minutes. Once again, it's a high threat mid, high threat jungle. So I'm starting to notice a pattern. When we play against a high threat laner and a high threat jungle, we tend to be very uh, like low damage, like low impact. So it's like, hmm, what's going on? If we go to the next loss, is it similar? This one isn't. There's a high threat support, but a high threat top. Uh, I guess we'd have to see what happened this game. You know, where we're getting ganked by Pike and Pantheon a lot. You know, we'll keep taking a look. Um, bum, 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 bum. So that's an interesting pattern. So after this OP review, I'd ask Mr. Goblin, hey, how do you feel when you're playing against super aggressive uh, champions? How do you feel when you're playing against Irelia's and Silas's and Yasuo's? Are you able to just keep them even and not die to them in lane? Are you able to come out of lane with zero deaths and high CS? If you can do, if you can do those things, 
their win rate against these champions just kind of shoots up. But otherwise, that's Goblin's review. Not a ton to look at, right? I mean, if somebody is playing correctly and they're playing in a healthy way, sometimes you leave an OP review without a lot to say other than like, keep it up, right? You have a good win rate, you're doing some good things, and then go look at these things in your gameplay, see how it's looking. Okay, the next volunteer we got here is Josie Jams. Josie Jams is a silver one uh, mage player. And again, first thing we look at, games played. Holy schmoly, this is not enough games played. Uh, we have 200 games played. I mean, the season's been out for what, three or four months? Uh, so that means Josie has been playing one game every couple days. That's not enough to practice. So, and you can even see in his past seven days, he's only played a few games. Well, this is 12. He wanted to play more than that, right? You'd, you'd maybe want to double this. If, you, if Josie could find time to play two a day, that would be a really good starting point. Maybe even three a day if he has time for it. Um, this is the first thing I'd mention. Our games are low. If we want to get a lot of success in league, it would help to just, just, you know, squeeze in another game or two over the weekend. Another game or two at night. I know it can be tricky in the silver range because games tend to last a while, but uh, quite a few of these are pretty quick. Anyways, so games played and, you know, we'll kind of check how often they get played. He plays pretty consistently, it looks like. You know, it looks like he plays a couple a day. I mean, this day he even played four. But there's kind of these like two day breaks in here pretty consistently. And those two-day breaks add up if you don't plan on making up for them. So, I would, you know, I'd ask Josie, you know, what's going on with those two-day breaks? This is, this is really unique. I've never seen this style where they're, like, super consistent and then they, like, take two days off every few days. That's really interesting. So I would challenge Josie to, those days, maybe, you know, maybe try to fit in a game at night just to keep the process of playing up and keep the process of practicing up. They don't have to spend so much time coming back. And then we'll look at Champions Played. Uh-oh. Josie has the too many champions problem. Josie here, we got a little bit over 200 games. You can see we got 60 on this champion, 50 on this one, 40 on this one, 30 on this one, 20 on this one. Now, my general rule of thumb is you want 80% of your games played on your main three. Now, Josie has five, five champions here. It's a bit too much. It's just, it's just a bit too much. We're wasting a lot of our time. And then we have like some Diana and Syndra and that's just ridiculous. Like why on earth would we ever play these champions? We already are juggling five. This is just, this is just begging to like waste your time. I, I, unless you really enjoy it, but if you really enjoy it, just keep it to normals or flex queue. So that would be my challenge for Josie. Um, and then we'll start to look at the builds. We see pretty much only comment on the Sandra. We also see TP. So I never recommend TP. Uh, oh, we see some electrocute down here. I do recommend electrocute. There's a difference between electrocute. Okay, whoa. So Josie is doing something here where not only is he playing lots of different champions, but he's changing the champion's identity to what he takes consistently. So you think he's played 48 games of, of Lissandra, but no, he's played half of those as electrocute ignite Lissandra and half of those as Comet TP Lissandra, or maybe he's even split it up more than that. And it's like, oh my goodness, Josie, you played like, a hundred different champions. You only have 200 games played. You have to stop experimenting and you have to play the game. You have to express yourself a little bit. So what I would tell Josie is I don't, I don't care what you run. I don't care if you run Comet or Electric or TP or Ignite. Now I would recommend to run Electric and Ignite period always. Um, maybe swapping Comet and Electric based on matchup because I don't think TP is very good in solo queue, especially in low elo where people tend to use it as a crutch, but that's what I would recommend. However, it doesn't actually matter. Just stick to one thing and we'll be much better off for it. Now, Josie also has something unique here where his overall accounts win rate is about 50%, but he has a champion that he's just smurfing on. 65% win rate overall. He's 60% win rate over the week. I would tell Josie to one trick Lissandra until his Lissandra win rate plateaus. And then once he plateaus at his next rank, maybe it's gold four, maybe it's gold three, maybe it's higher. Then you can start to add in one or two other champions to fit your pool. However, Josie's account, I would call this an account that prioritizes fun over progress. And this is a pretty common kind of theme for accounts where we are prioritizing playing different champions. We're prioritizing experimenting with builds. We're prioritizing changing our summoners and our runes and our identity rather than doing the thing that will make us the most progress in terms of our learning. That's, that's what I would recommend to Josie. Think about why you play. If you play for ranked, be serious about it on this account. 
and get real. Stop, stop playing all these weird champions. Stop playing, stop changing the identity of the champions. Stay focused and get very, very good at what you do. Very good at what you do. And then we can see if there's any common themes. The common themes don't really matter because they're going to be very different. The reason we lose these games with TP Comet are going to be so different than the reason we lose this game with Ignite or with these games with, with uh, Electrocute or these games that are on a completely different champion. I can't help you because you have so many problems because you've opened up so many variables. Um, to simplify the game so you can help yourself and so you can get coached a little bit easier, simplify, 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 simplify. It will make you a much better player even though it's a little bit uh, less room for experimentation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, we might make one where I review more of your guys' OP.GGs in the future. Drop them in the comments below. I'll reply to your comment if we make that video. I hope you guys have a good night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.